Welcome to a tutorial on uh, my workflow process. Uh, workflow is defined as a set of steps that I take to get from the, my initial question to the result that I'm looking for. So in this case, uh, my steps involve uh, writing a program in Fortran. To give you an example of what that looks like, I've written a very simple program. Uh, we'll see what that looks like first here uh, in simple.f90. And the contents of that Fortran source code are just a uh, basically a loop here. Uh, so to run that, I would use a G Fortran compiler. And then again, when I see what's in the directory, there's a new file called a.out, and I'll run that. And I see that it's gone, oh, this loop value has gone from one to four, just as we might expect based on the source code. In Ubuntu, I can install the G Fortran compiler with sudo apt-get. That's how I would install it if I didn't have it already. You can also get the binary from uh, the website here for, for Windows uh, and for Mac. And that address is gcc.gnu.org slash wiki slash G Fortran binaries. Now, you'll notice I have a little bit of documentation in the form of a comment, but uh, this isn't very complete in that if I wanted to read some form of documentation separate from the source code, that's not available currently. What I can do is use a program called RoboDoc. We'll take a look at that. So RoboDoc, what its function is, is it takes your source code and if you run a compiler against that source code like this, it will generate an application. Whereas if you run the program RoboDoc against that same source code, it will generate a documentation file. So in this way, you keep your uh, source file with the documentation, and it can be automatically generating either a documentation file or an application. To give you an idea of what that looks like, uh, I've got a program uh, that I've written called Simple with RoboDoc. And the contents are basically the same, except now I've got uh, an extra section with these special comment lines here. Uh, and these are going to be interpreted by the RoboDoc compiler. So I can, again, compile that with the G Fortran compiler as before because those new lines are just comments to the compiler or I can compile that same program with RoboDoc and here I have the command already saved out RoboDoc and then I'm telling it what the source code file name is in this case uh, simple with RoboDoc and then my document output is going to be called simple with robodoc and it's going to be of type html so now if i run this command i can look in that same directory and i have a file that's an html file so that's how i generate documentation with robodoc the other thing that i do to keep track of the different versions is something called version control and I use subversion, so SVN, and uh, another option is called Mercurial. So these are two ways of keeping track of the versions of your program. The thing that I want to make sure of is that my program is not dependent on some special feature of the compiler. I want to make sure that my solution that I'm creating isn't compiler dependent. So the way that I do that is I test it with another compiler. So I've got my files there. I'll get rid of the executable. And I can compile with another one called iFort. So hypothetically, when I run this, I should get the exact same output, and I do. So what I've done is I've installed a second compiler, and you can get this for free for educational use. Just search for iFort compiler free download. It's a little bit more complicated than GFort, but it gives you the confidence that your program is not dependent on using the GFort compiler. 
Now the next thing I want to do for my research is make this parallel. So I've got a simple loop here, it goes from 1 to 4 in serial, and what I want to do is convert that into a parallel program. What that will allow me to do is if I have two computers, I can run these two parts of the loop on one computer and these two parts on another. What I use to do that is called MPI, Message Passing Interface, and this is just the wiki address for that MPI standard. Installing that is even more complex than the Intel compiler, but most of the supercomputers in the United States have MPI available for use. So that's what I'm interested in using. In this directory, I've got two programs, the original serial program that we were looking at previously, and then another second program called the, a parallel version. So it, parallel hello. So we're going to look at this in an editor so that we have syntax highlighting. And in this case, I'm using the program called Kate. So we've got, as with the normal Fortran program, the same declarations, but now I've got a new line called mpif.h, and then I initialize my, my environment here, and then this is the loop. So this is the same loop structure as we had in the serial version, but now uh, it's running in parallel. To run that, in this case, I'm going to use MPIF90 and then now I've got a executable to go with that from the compiler. To run a parallel program I'm going to use MPI run and then I have to specify how many processors are going to be available to this executable so I'm using NP number of processors so I've got MPI run number of processors 2 for this executable called 8.0. When I run this I get back something indicating that I am CPU 0, rank 0. Uh, these two parts of the loop ran, and on the second processor, rank 1, the other two parts of the loop ran. So I have just created a, a par I've just run a parallel program, which does the exact same thing as my original serial version. Now the difficulty is, in terms of maintenance, is that you've got both a serial and parallel program for the same algorithm. And this can be somewhat difficult to maintain if, if you're doing a lot of different changes. If you're changing your serial, serial algorithm, you want to make sure those changes are also in your parallel algorithm. So this is where templates become useful. Uh, in this folder here, I've got one file, a Python file. We'll see what that looks like over here. So I've got my, my Python template and I'm using Mako templates in this example to generate two source code versions. What a template does is you have one input file and you can generate multiple source code versions from that template. So in this case what that means is I've got all of my algorithm here in both serial and parallel versions. So this, comment, this line right here and this line are common to both algorithms. And then this section is unique to the parallel version. This one, the else, belongs to the serial version. So I've got if it's parallel equals yes, then, do, then include these lines. Otherwise, it's serial and include this line. So uh, the things that I need to include in either the parallel or serial version, I've just put in if and else blocks. And these are interpreted by Python and they generate uh, a source code file. So from this big algorithm here, I can generate both a serial and parallel, sorry, a, both a parallel and a serial version. So how, did, how do I run that? Back in this directory, I can type Python and parallel, and it ran very quickly because all it did was create two text files one is the serial output and the other is the parallel output. So if I look at these contents, I've got my original serial program and if I look at the other one, sorry, I'll put, so these two files, these two source code versions came from the same Python template. So what that means in terms of maintenance is that all I have to do when I want to make a change to my algorithm 
is change this set of code here. So I just make one change and then I can generate different versions of the source code to implement both the serial and parallel versions. So this is Mako templates in combination with Python. Sites for that, here's Python. You can download very easily for Ubuntu or install it on Windows. And then Mako templates are an add-on for Python. The next thing that I'd like to show you is that I can actually include running those executables in the Python template. So in our next example, this is a similar Python template as previous, and it's got the same algorithm, except I've added some more commands here, where I'm going to first compile the source code that is generated, and then run them to make sure they actually work. And I'm going to run them with both G4Tran and i4, the serial versions, and then MPIF90 for the, the parallel version. So I should get two source code versions and three executables, and I'm going to run all of those. This is done in one step. So I just type one command, and I do a whole lot of things. I generate the source code, and I've generated the executables. I've compiled them with three different co compilers, and then run all three of them to make sure they work. So the other option, the other things that you can do, uh, just to help with documentation, is use a program called GraphViz, and uh, this you can map different variables in your program, but we'll save this for another tutorial along with metadata and shell scripting.